Tanzania, Africa, where the most prized game is the Big Five, of which the leopard is the greatest challenge, as Bob Fokrod's out to find. This is the real Africa. This is the real wild. There's no high fences in, in Tanzania. I stress that you are in the wilds of Africa. You hear lions roar and hippos. You see them right from the hillside overlooking the river and, and the birds and the monkeys and the sunsets. I mean, it just is spectacular. And the, the first night you, you try to go to sleep, you're just sitting there and, and, and you're pinching yourself saying, yeah, I'm, I'm here, I'm finally here. This is the real Africa. This is the real wild. And you're going from seeing the city to uh, basically to nothing, just wild jungle Africa. Well, we got a hippo last night. It was too late to, to really take care of it, so we left it till this morning. Everybody came back, made a good effort to get all the meat and everything out. We're gonna put some in the tree for a leopard bait because we've been seeing a lot of tracks around here. The trackers are out right now building a blind for us. We're gonna plan to set in that blind, see if we can get that leopard. The other thing is the amount of tracks that we've seen in Ireland. It looks like our chances are pretty good. Yes, it does. Yeah, it makes it exciting. And that's, of course, the other thing about Tanzania. You never know. <laughs> That's right. There's a surprise around every corner. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what might come in, leopard or lion? This Pennsylvania boy's not really that yeah. fussy. <laughs> Let the hunt begin. <laughs> <laughs> With fresh hippo meat for bait, Folkrod and Pierre Van Tonder have a leopard feeding on it. Now they have a blind built and hope that luck will be with them. Well, the trail cam pictures show that we got a leopard coming in here. Clinton and the crew of guys have been building a blind all day and getting it set up. They've even swept the trail so we can get in there nice and quiet. And be lying to you if I told you I wasn't excited. You're just like a kid at Christmas time. You just can't, you just can't hardly stand yourself waiting for the day to go by and you're trying to take a nap and you can't sleep. And, and, you're, and again, you're in Africa. You're in Africa hunting leopard. I mean, how more exciting can that be? Bob will need a good rest for his shot, but the hunt begins well before that when he and his guides approach the blind in silence and then have to stay that way. So we had a code, Bob and I would give him a little squeeze on the leg and he would uh, know that there was a, a leopard in the tree. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to walk in slowly then for Bob and then uh, get you seated and get everything ready and then wait for, for the big man. We have restrictions in Tanzania that a leopard must be 1.5 meters from the tip of his nose to the end of his tail, so for that matter, only males, and we've got to make sure about it. I think he's cleaned up the bath first nicely, so it won't make a noise. He's cleaned up inside the blind, you see, everything's nice and quiet, so uh, our chances are pretty good. Let's do it. Let's see what we Yeah, let's get this done. We tiptoe into it. They'd actually brushed the trail out so we could go in there and not make any noise, and, and we're trying not to make any moves So we're sitting here and we're hearing this noise and hearing this rustling through the leaves, you know, and you go, gosh, is that, is that him, you know? And, you, and all of a sudden these, these mongoose go up the tree, you know, and I go, oh man, there's nothing around. And the mongoose is uh, up a tree and all of a sudden, boom, boy, they just, they jumped and they ran off and the birds are starting to squawk and the mongooses are giving, and you just knew, you just could, you could just feel the presence of this leopard coming in. The next thing I just saw the movement through the bushes and the leopard got into the tree. And all of a sudden I feel a touch on my leg and, and old Pierre squeezing, <laughs> he's squeezing my leg. I lean into the rifle and the experience has taught me don't rush the shot and I'm putting pressure on the trigger and he starts to move. And I thought he was going to jump off, and he, and he jumps, and he goes up the tree. I feel pretty confident he's going to come back down again. You know, it's like, you know, hunting bears or hunting anything. Don't rush the shot. You rush the shot, you take a chance of wounding him. If you miss the shot, there goes your chance ever for that leopard again. So experience taught me just wait, wait. And I want, it seemed like an hour for this leopard to come back down out of the tree. 
I could see his tail up there and all of a sudden he's coming back down the tree. And he comes over there and he just gets over and I'm putting pressure on the trigger. I mean, he just whop, he falls down, and it, everything was like in slow motion. And how cool is that? In the broad daylight, a leopard in Tanzania. 62 years old and my heart was racing like anything. I mean, if you can't get excited over a leopard, man, you just need to stay home and take up golf or something. What's the chances of that? In the daylight in Tanzania, a leopard. That is too cool right there. You don't think the trackers aren't excited? They worked hard building us a blind and everything and they're, they're singing as they should be, man. Folks, I want to tell you, it just doesn't get any better than that. That's the thrill of it. That's the adventure coming to Tanzania. Trust me, it is an adventure.